Um, perhaps that's an agenda item we could set up for next time okay. to explore more. Where could we get land? Who do we need to coordinate with? Well, let me weigh in on that a little bit. Sure, John Olson. Um, you got to do what you got to do. And if it's going to cost, it's going to cost because we weren't willing to do it preemptively to get the, the necessary space. I realize that I'm focusing primarily on Puna because we are not developing any new uh, building sites. We've already got, you know, <laughs> some numbers of tens of thousands of them sitting there that are vacant now that are going to be built on. And we're, the, as far as Pune is concerned, we're in the middle of an absolute building craze. And, you know, the idea of a $400,000 home in Pune, nobody laughs anymore. The people are coming in, they are building them. I would invite you all for a trip through Hawaiian Paradise Park through the first eight streets, one through eight. It is a frenzy. Three and four and five bedroom homes going up on one acre. They are paying, you know, easily six figures at the top end for these homes. And we're going to have to provide the service, and it's going to cost. There's just no avoiding it. The deed has already been done. So we got, we have to quit a, a wringing our hands over where we're going to get the money um, to the point that the property taxes, if it follows the sale, the sales value, the money is going to come in, at least as far as Poon is concerned. That's going to happen. It is happening. And we need, to, we need to address that, get used to it, and, and move on it. Um, the, the three well, sides one, one of the things that um, we're, we're going to have, if you s snuck a peek toward the end of the agenda, is uh, get, get the uh, Planning Commission here. I believe we're going to be able to lock them for next month. And maybe we could talk about the issue of we need land, we need zoning, um, we need well, to, to build. In the case of grant Puna, is giving us, we need to build some infrastructure so that we can uh, do better job managing our um, waste, our, our unwaste, our reusable waste. Other comments on this topic, or I'll figure out how to get it on the agenda next time. Yeah, Georgine, um, this is Rick. I just, I want to back up um, Dell's suggestion because I, I think she's absolutely correct. And in, in my district, um, Hawaiian Homelands um, has land adjacent to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, and they also have land adjacent to the state ag park um, at um, the bottom of Kaiminani. Um, and neither of those properties currently has any planning for use by DHHL. Um, they are um, they're basically standing by looking for something to do. So both of those are potential sites for um, a recycling center. And in particular, the site adjacent to the Ag Park is a, a very appropriate place to do composting. Um, and uh, anyway, so I, I think that's, I, okay. I think maybe we ought to think about talking to DHHL on this island as well as the planning commission in the future. Okay. So, Let's see if we can uh, work them in too. Anybody else? That topic? Because I'm as frustrated that yeah, we aren't going to be able to pull it off, but I certainly understand the, the challenge of if you can't commit to staffing, um, don't throw money down the sewer because Ramsey's going to ban it with our pretreatment standards. Um, next up is uh, item, uh, what am I doing? Five, five, three, discussion assignments 
for following up on um, prior EMC recommendations. I made up another version of what I called the tracker um, of uh, things that we have put in to um, either DEM or into the council in writing as, as recommendations, um, very few of which have been completed. And Rick Gaffney uh, and Dee Fulton uh, had made a very good, strong comment that perhaps we do these things, we should be following up and making sure that they are indeed happening because they're still good ideas. Um, what I would like to see is that we've got somebody other than your chair, uh, looking at uh, what's going on, reporting occasionally back to the commission, ideas for how to, to do follow-up. I don't know if I should see if I could bring it up or if everybody had a chance to look at uh, the um, write-up I did. I also included a section about not, we didn't turn anything in formally as EMC in writing, but we've talked about the concepts and certainly I at least view these meetings as an opportunity to um, bend the ear of DEM and to let them know what we are concerned about and come up with some ideas for them to chew on. Uh, so I captured some of that in the chart. Should I bring it up or everybody knows what it's about because what I'm gonna ask is volunteers to uh, tackle the issues that are listed there. Don't necessarily have to, to do it at this meeting, but I'd like to fill in the blank on each of the items so that we've got somebody who's gonna take the time to see what's going on and what we need to do, or say that it's closed either as a lost cause or uh, here's a different way to go about it. Let me see if I can. <laughs> I got I got my new Mac system, and so I I can't um, switch. Know where I'm going on these silly things. Um, somewhere I have it. Georgine, while you're while you're searching out, I, I want to make a comment with regard to that, um, the list as well. In some cases, the recommendations are specific to a council district, mm -hmm. not, not more broadly general. And those that are specific to a council district can be taken to the council person for that district. Mm -hmm. They and their staff could be asked to provide feedback as to what has happened since the recommendation from the commission. Correct. And, and I would also say that everybody has the ability to uh, themselves go in. I don't know why the heck I'm not being able to find the, the file to be able to share. Uh, Peter, if you could bring it up, maybe that would be helpful. Um, yes, we can go to individual um, counselors. Uh, we can go to committee. We're still trying to figure out. They've changed the committee names uh, at the council, uh, but we need to, to reconnect with who's going to be the one dealing with DEM. Uh, and I think it was uh, a good idea for us to work with uh, the chair and the vice chair with the EMC counterparts. Uh, just keeping each other up to snuff on what uh, issues are, are around and how we could deal with it. Um, so I have to, we'll have to get back to you on who's who there. Um, but anyway, so this is, I just went back this time, back to 2020 and tried to capture uh, the top of this or the the written items where we sent a letter to somebody officially on EMC letterhead um, and who needs to follow up with it. Um, and that's what that, that last column is about. 
Um, and since we later on the agenda are gonna be uh, identifying new chair and vice chair, there are some blanks that we might be able to fill in there. Um, also, if you scroll down, um, okay. Peter, to the second block. These are kind of the, the ongoing issues. And I, I'm thinking, you know, the last couple of years, I had asked the commissioners to come up with their own personal priorities of what issues are you going to be working on? kind of a to-do list for you individually. Um, and maybe we can turn that or absorb that into this more ongoing issues uh, section uh, where we've got somebody who's who's gonna be paying attention to these issues, thinking of ideas on an ongoing basis, and then figuring out, bringing most likely specific recommendations to the EMC. So there may be some other issues you'd like to add to this. Um, and again, to volunteer to uh, be the lead and bring issues back to the EMC. So is anybody prepared at this time to identify either new issues or things they'd like to take the lead on? Or do you wanna individually send them to Peter? Well, I think we do have a lot of, you know, a lot of variability in in terms of the of the impact based on what currently exists in terms of land use. In other words, again, you know, harping on what I what I'm most familiar with, which is Puna. You know, we have Wine Paradise Park. We have twelve thousand one acre lots on fourteen thousand acres. At what point does the EPA come and say, oh, by the way, you're not putting in any more septic systems. You're going to have to deal with it on a larger scale. And you know, you and and I can go down from there to you know the the 8,050 square foot lots of which there are 5,000 in Nanavale. Right now we're putting septic tanks in the ground. At what point are they going to draw the line on that? They have to. It isn't going I to I think fall. we'll have uh, um, later on the agenda when DM talks about uh, the cesspool conversion group. I think it's it's very related to that of, you know, is, uh, is switching yeah. over to septic or putting septic in in the first place the right thing to do or do we well you can't do it for sewering too much density yeah okay um <laughs> tell me it ain't so no i i appreciate your your comment i will add that topic are you volunteering to lead it well i'm certainly not afraid of it <laughs> I mean, okay. you know, I've dealt, we've, I, I, I got in for a, a, a dime early on, and now I'm in for the dollar. So, um, okay, I will, I will figure out in in, in line with coming up with the agenda item for next meeting, uh, tied to the the zoning presentation. Hopefully, we get, um, yeah. Uh, add that as as a topic area as well on this tracker, and I'll put your name on it. Anybody else ready to move? We're going to lose Ramsey at eleven, so um, think about it and get back to me, or I'll allow the new chair to fill in the blanks. <laughs> um, speaking of putting names down on lists. Uh, item four is the status of the permitted interaction group on barriers to commercial recyclers. Um, frankly, I've been doing this all by myself and uh, Melissa has not been able to give time and, and I'm hoping it wasn't the reason that Elise dropped off the EMC, but um, 
there is some homework involved and discussions, and I don't feel it's proper for me to carry it on as just me. Um, so I would like to either get two um, participants, uh, commissioners uh, joining me on that group or to discontinue it and just figure we'll, we'll pull that information in as we go along. So Georgine, this is Dell. Can you elaborate on what this is all about? Um, this is the first time I've heard of it. I mean, in, uh, in brief. In brief, it's basically looking at what are what are the regulatory and process infrastructure, whatever it may be, um, barriers to having more recycling businesses on this island, and they're being able to expand. And and so I've got a. a a chart, I could share it, it's awfully rough, so I just soon not share it at this time. Um, but it, it includes things like land, we've got no space, we can't afford this space. Um, it, the county won't let us use the transfer stations as commercial entities. Um, we've got no ability to market the stuff that we take. Um, because we need assistance to find out who's got it and who wants it. Um, so there are some uh, zoning issues, uh, some uh, costs and ability to work with um, the limited staff that the county has to be able to expand those businesses. Um, so it's just trying to track that down and looking at the various businesses talking with who exists uh, as is on the island and maybe who would like to exist on the island and, and trying to pull up what are some of the initiatives that we could recommend as an EMC. Well, before you kill it, uh, maybe you can at least email me or send me your hard copy before okay. I commit to keeping <laughs> it going. All right, I will send it to you and, and see and that, that makes one person. If there are just two of us doing this, we do not need a formal group permitted interaction group. Well, before I commit to, can you send me that? All right, I will send it to you and I will defer this recommendation um, to next time. Okay, sounds good. Um, actually, I think you'd be really good at helping me out. Um, number three, uh, five, I can't even read now, um, is the uh, old Kona landfill. Rick had brought that up last time. Um, I included a description in the reference folder uh, about the landfill. It's cooking away, closed, but not pristine. Um, Perhaps Ramsey, you could you could say, what are you guys doing with it right now? Are you doing active monitoring? Currently, yes, we have a consultant on board that uh, they do annual monitoring on that particular landfill. Um, and we also have um, budgeted some some funds to Actually, it seemed like we have a sinkhole yeah. currently, so we're doing some re remediation on on the existing cover. Um, this landfill was permitted and closed prior to 1993 subtitle D. Um, so it doesn't need the current regulation because it was grandfather and prior to the new regulation when it came in it allows you to have a certain cover on landfills and gas system and leach collection system so that landfill was designed constructed operated without any gas headers without any gas collection system so as you all know waste over time biodegrade and it creates more gases. And gas usually seeps through the least resistant path. So it could go 
underground, it could go sideways, it could go upward. It always finds a way to escape. But the, the concern here is anytime you have an oxygen intrusion into that landfill with a gas buildup, it could potentially um, cause explosions to that landfill. So we've been monitoring that. Um, there's some hot, <coughs> some hot spots uh, within the landfill. Um, so it's gonna be continuous monitoring. Once the landfill closed, we pretty much own it for life. Mm -hmm. So um, the maintenance is gonna continue. Probably some other projects uh, may come in just to remedy these sinkholes. Why we call them sinkholes? Because also when waste biodegrades, it allows for a gap void. So that's what triggered differential settlement because now food get biodegraded and it settles, the land that settles to fill that gap. So it's a combination of differential settlement plus gas generation and the potential of any cracking within the current cover could introduce oxygen to the allowable limit of ignite the current situation. So, so, so uh, my understanding then is you are doing monitoring and you are doing some level of remediation. Um, I guess the biggest question is, are, are you, how's your gut feeling? Are, are we looking at imminent hazard? Or are we looking at we can manage this with some attention? Well, it's it's you know there's always imminent hazard when it comes to these type of situation. Is it going to get better in time when all the all the gases are depleted and biodegradation and all completed? Uh, maybe, but it's going to take time. We pretty much right now maybe. If you look at it from a curve point of view, maybe somewhere between the peak and and going down because it was closed in the early 1990 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So usually it takes 50 years before, when you get to the peak, when the gas generation start happening and then it start diving down. So um, definitely, um, we are in the generation of gas period. Uh, if we capture it, could we capture it? Uh, not being lined, um, when you put a vertical wells uh, or horizontal extraction wells to extract the gas, it's gonna be thought very carefully because that also could introduce oxygen because of the vacuum. So um, these type of situation is always gonna be a hazard. Mm -hmm. You do something, it's going to ignite some. You leave it, it's going to ignite some. So the best solution for that, just continue monitoring, understand the symptoms of it, and try to remedy it. Uh, but at the meantime, it just we're going to babysit it as much as we can. There's potential, but we try to remedy that and control it to the best of our abilities. I have a question on that, too. Um with the monitoring, we can monitor something over and over and, and still do nothing and not realize maybe there's something that's underlying that we're not looking at because we're so focused on how we're doing it. So I'm thinking maybe if the eruption with Mauna Loa, if anything that's underground could affect um, the landfill or, you know, I don't understand enough, but I'm just saying, we can monitor stuff all the time. And, and before you know it, something happens. Are we prepared to do something? You know, is there a, a plan, a backup plan to, if you find out after you're monitoring, I don't know how often you monitor, but if it's not done consistently, especially because we think there's imminent, there's something that can happen. If we're only monitoring it periodically and not frequently, something might just surprise us and we're not gonna be prepared. So I'm just wondering, all this monitoring is anything, um, 
being thought of or planned to do in case something goes awry in your monitoring? Yeah, th this is um, this is a requirement by Department of Health uh, to monitor a closed landfill. Usually, we understand um, what landfills does and doesn't do during closure. It's it's a phenomenon that um, you know uh, it's been all over the country, all over the world. So it's you monitor with the with the hope that um, you control the cracks within the cover so it doesn't introduce oxygen. You monitor the amount of oxygen on the surface. So it's it's, it's standard procedures of monitoring, um, but it you know something that you cannot get away from. Uh, you anticipate, you know, possibly explosion. That's the worst thing could happen in these type of situation. And it happened before. Um, I had a landfill in 1993, caught on fire um, because it just um, it was too much gas buildup and, and the contractor was tearing up the cover and reduce oxygen. The whole landfill just but it's controllable. What you do is you get equipment, you put cover on it, and um, you remedy the situation. So um, the biggest I think I think the question that. for EMC is, do we need to do like we did with Hilo and lobby to get you more money to deal with that thing now rather than after the fact um, remediate? It well, sounds like it's it's controllable and maybe not panic <clears throat> compared to all the other money needs you have. Yeah, I, we have, like I said, this was closed, considered closed under Department of Health, re, retitled 27, the 1993 rules. Mm -hmm. So... The minute you introduce anything, you open a can of worm now, you, you got to meet the new requirement. It's not going to do you good because the bottom is not lined. So you, you're going to create a door, you know, um, potentially if you cover the top and the bottom is not lined. So um, you're building a bomb. You're building a bomb in a sense. Yeah. So you're building a bomb. So the idea is just we. We got what we got. We need to manage it to the best of our ability based on the technologies and the experience and the expertise that we bring to it, period. So, so Rick, it's in your backyard. Yeah, well, the reason I brought it up. Satisfied with that? No, I'm not at all fine with that. I, I completely disagree. Um, what we know about this landfill is that it's located uh, relatively close to where the sump for the wastewater treatment plant drains into the lava. And we also know that that sump, that the water from that sump ends up in the ocean. We also know that we have a degraded coastal environment as a result of that problem. And if there's any leachate, coming from this dump, and almost certainly there is, it is following the same pathways that the water from the sump is following into the ocean. And our nearshore environment is absolutely critical to the economy of this island. It's absolutely critical to the recreational needs of the people of this island as well. And for that reason, I believe that the landfill needs to be completely legally 2023 regulations closed and over and done with. And that's the reason that I brought this subject up initially. I realize that's expensive, that it's time consuming, that it's all of those things, but what it's doing to the environment right now is only gonna get worse over time. And the only way to prevent it from doing that to the environment is to close it completely and do the right thing. So I, that's, that's my feeling. And the other thing that I learned as part of the process of raising this subject is that's not the only inadequately closed landfill on this island. Mm -hmm. There's another one in Waimea. 
-hmm. And I suspect there are probably others as well that go back to the plantation days. So, yep, I understand super expensive problem. Don't have the manpower, don't have the time, don't have all that, but the right thing to do if we're protecting the ocean, which is being impacted by so many other things right now, uh, for the future of this island, for the future of the people of this island, for the future of our, our number one um, economic driver, which is ocean recreation tourism, we've got to fix this. I will share with you that with members of the EPA, we did a site visit out there decades ago and the people who were there believed that it was almost inevitable that you were going to have a bad outcome. But they, they had no legal way to force us to do anything other than what was the cheapest way to get out from under what the law was at the time. They, they made that very clear. They couldn't do anything about it, but they could tell you that the outcome is very, very likely to be un... Not unhappy. good. Just, yeah. just to clarify one thing, the landfill currently, is adequately closed under the laws that the law. were yeah. present at that time. So yep. to say it's inadequately closed is an accurate statement because it was done when the laws were there, it was closed when the laws were there. Mm -hmm. The question is, you know, does the new law provide additional protection on the closure? Um, currently, you already have an earthing cover, and a lot of different landfills, when it comes to closure, they do recommend to put an earthen cover to allow for the landfill to breathe. You do a vegetative, vegetative cover of about one foot to two foot with low hydraulic conductivity to close the landfill rather than put in a plastic, you know, type of liner. And that's that's what most of, you know, landfill now they pursue, pursue uh, earthen cover material to close their landfill because they turn it to more vegetative looking. Some of them, they turn it to a golf course if the terrain is adequate. So what we call it is post closure use. The challenge here, you get a landfill that is not lined in the bottom. So leach it from, you know, by degrading the waste is always going to leak through. Uh, Rick, you brought up before the clean closure, that's probably the only best way to do it. Um, but the challenge with that, our current landfill only got 20 years remaining. I get it. Yeah, so, um, and to me, that's the best way to do it. If we could clean close the site, the ultimate solution. Well, the only real solution. The only real solution. It's the only Put in a cover on the top of it. We already have an earthen cover that could do the job. Well, I'm, I'm glad we had this discussion. That's the reason that I raised the subject. I just wanted to be sure that all of the other commissioners were aware that we have these ticking time bombs for our environment on this island. And um, I think Ramsey just said it very well, that the, the right thing to do is to do a clean closure on these things. And if the will of the people is that that's what we do, it doesn't matter whether the EPA um, thinks that's appropriate, um, we go chase the funding and we get the job done uh, with or without their help, with or without the help of the Department of Health. Um, if the people of this island believe that these landfills need to be clean closed, then um, they can drive the action too. So, but I, bottom line is that's why I brought the subject up was to have the discussion, to keep it in the forefront, to be sure that the commissioners uh, ongoing are aware that we have these these um, uh, well 
I said it. Um, thank you, Rick. Uh, I guess the, are there any other comments from the commissioners? I have one, you know, after reading all this stuff on the solid waste and the wastewater, you know, I, it's taking too long to do the things we know need to be done. And mm -hmm. it's always the same reason where it's funding and staffing, but nowhere have I heard what's being done or how much money we are getting. Because as I look through the revenue and expenditures, which are just estimated, you know, I'm wondering where is this money going if it's not going to where it's, it's supposed to go. So there's a lot of money in there as far as the revenue that I see. But uh, I'm just saying, I don't know what is a clean close. I was trying to read up on that. But if that's what it takes, that's what we should be doing because the money is in there and I see it being rolled over every year and it's not being used for what it's supposed to be. And we constantly say the staffing. And I know everywhere is having problems with staffing, but I also read some of the um, comments made by some employees that, um, you know, it would be good to, because they're union, to maybe elevate those that's been there a while that know so much. And they're just, they're waiting for new hires to come on so they can train the new hires. When we have qualified people that's already in, um, you know, in the payroll. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I'm just having a hard time digesting that the reason nothing ever gets done the way we want it to when it should is the funding and the staffing. I, you know, that's my whole thing. Because wastewater, that would be my, my real big concern too, because I live in Kilkaha. And we have the pump station right outside. So yeah, so I'm, I need more justification for the reasons why staffing is so bad and we never have money for the things that we're supposed to have money for. And that's it, thank you. Well, we don't have the money because we're not collecting it. But you know, when I'm looking at, when I'm looking at even only the water bill, there's a $50 charge, uh, it's a, it's just a standard charge and it's for everybody. And it's when I asked what that $50 is for, because it's way more than my, my consumption and everybody gets that. And it's because in the event something happens and you have to send an employee out to look at your meter or whatever it is, that's what that money is deemed for. And I don't know what the sewer cost would be on the monthly charge because I don't get sewer. But that, that's too, and then it's, it's how the sewer fees are done. Is it a split charge? I mean. I, I recommend. Oh, excuse me. Budget hearing is coming in March. I recommend that you um, definitely be involved in understanding the budget. The sewer, uh, we're not the water department. We only got 6,000 customers at $50, $45 for the entire island. Mm -hmm. That's why you're not paying the $50 for sewer because you don't have sewer. You have septic. Many septic. People? Oh, how many people on sewer that's being charged? Only 6,000 people. So we are, just to let you know, I don't know if you looked at our budget, our waste. I I did. Uh, I, I, I would. Hey, time out, guys. We're going to run out of time. I think what we might need to do is get Dell together yeah. with DEM and just walk through um, the, the budget process and where it goes and how it spends so she can get some more background on that. Um, if everybody on the group wants to go through and do zero based budgeting on what uh, DEM is doing with the funds they get. Uh, they don't spend more than they get. They're they're limited, and they only get so much that they squeeze out of the council. Um, so, if you want a, a budget review session, uh, as you say, you'll be going up in March uh, to the council to present your budget. Um, maybe that's an education thing that we could do um, for okay. uh, another meeting or between meetings. Lee, you had a comment. Yeah, I was just going to say, it sounds like the bigger issue is um, not really the money and the manpower or equipment. It's more of where are you going to put this trash? You know, from what I understand, the 
queen fill or whatever it was called earlier, um, you're essentially moving the trash to somewhere else. Um, our, they can't do that because our landfill only has 20 years or less left. It's quickly disappearing. And eventually, we have to figure out what we're going to do. And I think that's the bigger issue that is facing us. And we got to figure something out quick because it's coming fast. Right, which is why I'd like to, to move the agenda along. But I will let John Burns make comment. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh... Ramsey, I just had a quick question, and and I, I'm not trying to draw out an overcomplicated answer. Um, I was just curious because I do know Department of Water Supply. You know, they're sort of semi-autonomous with their budget, um, the way they're able to charge fees to reconcile projected costs. I, I'm just at the simplest level. Is that something that you think, like having that semi-autonomy, would that be an improvement to the current system and budget that you're using, or do you look at that as something that only works for that department? Uh, no, actually, they run it well. Um, there's two things with our department. We have the wastewater, which is a special fund, which is similar to the water board, um, the water uh, department. But the challenge here is not everybody connected to sewer. So your revenue is controlled by the people that you provide service to, which is very small amount because everybody is on cesspool and septic tank. So we need to get off cesspool and septic tank and expand our revenue base by having more people connecting to the sewer. Very simple equation, right? But it takes money to build the capital and improve. As far as the solid waste, the solid waste becomes part of the property tax. So every year we get budgeted based on the status quo. So we have to budget the same amount we've been budgeted every year. So we don't see an increase, right? So it, it comes to about 4% of the general fund. So we get about $28 million a year from the entire county general fund to do the solid waste management. This one, I agree with you, John. I just had a meeting with, since day one I started, my intent was, to get that out of the property tax, to create its own funds, such as enterprise funds, special funds, whatever you want to call it. And then, because a lot of people on this island would love to do more recycling, zero waste, to do more diversion. But unfortunately, when they did the property tax way back then, they included the solid waste program or solid waste services within that property tax. But back then and today, two different things. We didn't have recycling. We didn't have diversion. We didn't have environmental impacts. We didn't have climate change. So the demands are going up on the solid waste, but that amount of money is still the same as 30, 50, 60 years ago. Yeah, no, I know. It almost seems like solid waste needs to track, you know, user Inform like how much is going in and then have that on a sliding scale fee like Department of Water does somewhat. I mean, it's two different systems, but yeah, that like static property tax fee just doesn't seem realistic for what's going in the landfill. I, I agree. And I think maybe, you know, I've been thinking about it. Um, maybe we need to put it out to the people vote. Maybe that's the only way to get out of this mess. I don't know how to go about it. Maybe the legal mind could tell us how could we put it to the people's votes? Because I guarantee you, most of the people I talk to, they willing to pay the extra money to get the recycling, to get the diversion, to get to zero waste, to get to where we need to do environmental. Well, if I may. Well, I, I will go back into the, the tracker. We have made recommendations that um, DEM operate on an enterprise fund basis where they their revenue covers their costs um, and uh, they've got the ability to, to get it. I mean, funding is a never ending challenge uh, in how we do it. And in fact, on next meeting, uh, you'll see on a future agenda item, we'll get a reading from um, the corporate council 
on John's idea of an advanced disposal fee is another way. Uh, fun, funding is a big thing. And maybe we can focus next meeting on the whole budget issue. And again, try to figure out what it is we need to uh, go to the council with. And maybe it is go to the council with a recommendation that we have uh, a referendum or whatever they call it on this island, um, a charter amendment for the, the next vote. Um, but I got to get us moving because we are it's falling behind cool. and Ramsey's going to disappear. Um, new business. We're closing that topic. Okay. So that was about Kona, the old landfill. So that didn't work. Anyway, new business item six. Uh, need to vote for a new chair and vice chair for this year. Um, I'm willing to continue to serve, but more than happy for someone else to want to step forward if they would like to be chair. Um, the first time I joined EMC, I, I was um, amazed that the person who got voted to be chair wasn't even present at the meeting. Uh, surprise! <laughs> so who's missing from this meeting? Well, we'll nominate them for chair. Um, so we get a, uh, nominations for chair. Motions. What do you current, the current chair? No, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll second the nomination of Georgine for chair. <laughs> Discussion. Anybody else like to put their name forward or somebody else's name? Quick before she changes her mind. All those in favor. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All those in favor of Georgine continuing to be chair. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> I'll, I'll vote present. Okay, vice chair. There. Rick Rick Gaffney has been vice chair. I very much appreciated his service uh, and assistance and keeping all of us on our toes and even subbing for me once in a while. Um, would anybody like to be vice chair? The continuation of the current <laughs> vice chair. The current vice chair is actually here on loan. Um, his uh, term ended in December. He has the ability to continue, I believe, for the next two meetings, and then he's not eligible and will have a vacancy unless somebody else is uh, put in for District 8. Um, so no, not Rick, nor, nor um, Dee Fulton. She is also... Uh, officially off the commission. It's a great learning opportunity, Dell. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm too new. I don't know enough. No. Uh -huh. All right, we're, we're running out of people. I need a, we need a vice chair. Uh, Lee or John? Or John. Melissa's not here. She's had struggles uh, participating in the meeting, so I don't think um, it would be fair to ask her. Hey, Georgine, I'm going to recommend it not be me just because of the scheduling conflicts where the committee tends to meet Wednesdays and I teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So uh, I appreciate that. that. It's going to be problematic. Well, we could certainly move the meeting day. <laughs> I well, only can, trying that yeah. and seeing Dr. next Hannah meeting is pick, pick a day. Go ahead. <laughs> My only concern is I don't know all the procedures and everything involved, and I wouldn't want to have to lead the meeting when you're not here. <laughs> I'm more of a well, background type person. Peter, Peter, and uh, Sherry. Uh, I think are, are able to keep you on process as good as me. I'm terrible at Robert's rules. So uh, 
that's less an issue. I will try to help with the agenda and it it um, it's more just looking for somebody who will be a sub and also participate in the meetings. I'd like to nominate John Olson. Well, like I say, I can I can run a meeting, but I can't do the paperwork anymore. The fingers don't do the walking. So well, we have a fabulous secretary in, in Peter, sir. Um, I, I certainly know how and, to run and I will say as chair, as long as I've got connection to internet, I can I can do a lot of the work. Um the the pre-work. Chair, is there a second? Is there a second for John Olson? I'll second. Okay, Dell seconds. Uh, vote. Aye. Aye. Say aye. 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 Dell. Is an aye. Any opposed? John. Rick must heard me talking to you. All right. Uh, John Olson is now our chair. Thank Vice you. Chair. Vice chair. Wolf, vice chair, vice chair, sorry. Um, we'll work it out, John. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, we've got to move to uh, item seven, the uh, director's report. I hope you all read through that monster report. Uh, it was a wonderful summary of what was accomplished last year um, and also, um, included responses to information, but I would like permission since Ramsey and Dora, I believe are leaving at 11 o'clock uh, to jump to item seven three, which is wastewater uh, division projects and updates. Is that, do I have to get a motion to do that? I'll make a motion. Anybody You're second? Fine. You're, You're fine. fine. You're not okay. Concerned. I'm, I'm taking chair's prerogative uh, and we will address wastewater, a division project updates. Um, fabulous, fabulous. Kelly, I can't believe it. <laughs> that uh, set of charts and uh, tables that you provided are, are really great. And I think the issue for this committee uh, commission is, are we seeing enough that we know where we need or could help or complain uh, about the status, particularly the items that are behind uh, schedule. Uh, I think I understand the ones that are and why and that you're working on them, um, but I was very impressed. I don't know if, uh, Peter, you wanna, do, are people looking at it to see what's in there? Yes. Yeah, Are there any questions that you would have of the material? Otherwise, we'll ask um, Ramsey and Dora to pull out what highlights they really want us to focus on. I want to thank Kelly, too. I was impressed. So we had put the project schedules together, so they all have um, you know, the project milestones, except for the Nalehu and the Pahala project, I pulled out the AOC deadlines for the next three months. That helps us kind of gear up and prepare for what we need to submit. Um, the reports also include a list of late tasks, um, the project milestones. You'll notice the indentation on the project milestones. Um, that's important. Um, if it's under, it's called a sub project task. So it just kind of gives you a better idea of what each task is. It's all blurry. I can't, can't even see what's going on there. Okay, sure. We are. What project are we on? A little blurry. There we go. Yeah, you can. So it gave you, you know, for each project has an overall project view, it gives you the start and the end date of the project. Um, an overview of what's complete, you know, the big picture, high level stuff from project execution all the way to construction. Um, for this project, 
I pulled out specifically the AOC deadlines that we're looking at for the next three months that helps our team internally plan and um, coordinate these tasks and getting them ready for submittal. Um, I have a report for late tasks here. This one happens to be not an AOC deadline, but an internal process deadline. Um, also listed here, the project milestones, you'll see the indentation, that's important. So, um, you know, if you're looking at the implement the Pahala Elderly Apartments Compliance Plan, you know, this indentation shows me it's part of, um, you know, the, the construction of the project. So keep an eye on the indentation here. And for the rest of them, they pretty much follow the same format. I think for the rest of them, I also included a list of tasks starting soon. So you can see the list of tasks that are we're going to be um, getting into in the next three months. I kind of thought this was a good cover all. And so if you guys want these to be, you know, simpler than this in the future, just, you know, feedback is good. The comments or questions about any of the reports that are in here. Again, my my concern is if there's something you know, we can help with as a, a commission, or that we are very distressed at seeing how far behind you are on something. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's it's kind of up to you individually on on following up with DEM. Uh, on exactly what's going on if you you have some concerns. Um, I just have a question. Um, yeah, Del? yeah, no, I you know I like looking through this report. Um, but I was wondering about the cost of each of these projects. Is there a way that we can know how much so that you know it's kind of good to know? Um, not in the project schedule right now, but we can get you that information. These are all projects that have been executed. Um, so we already have the funds for these projects. If, if getting the funding is, is your concern. I think- No, I, because funding has always been an issue. Um, I was just wondering as I see these being completed or partially completed, how much money has actually gone into that. So then when we talk about a budget, we know where all that money is going and it all kind of balances out. That's kind of, yeah. but thank you. Anybody else? Is there anything, uh, Ramsey or Dora, that you want to particularly update us on? Yeah, yes, definitely. Um, like you all see, Kelly's doing really a mar marvelous uh, job yeah. of putting that project list together. Our goal is, to Dill's point, is to create um, a roadmap for every project. I call it the master schedule that uh, kind of takes every project we have, identify the resource, if it's staffing or funding that it needs. And it also refers to who's going to lead the project because within each project, you may have different lead leader or project manager. So this is the tools that from a managerial point of view, we have to provide to our staff. So between Kelly and I, and you know, we we doing all that so staff could have a clear direction of all the milestones. And the question about delays and what have you, you guys should not, hopefully you guys will never worry about it because, because our goal is to create that roadmap to allow our staff to stay within time and budget. So that's the whole idea. It's create a roadmap with all the tasks, assign it to certain leaders, um, project managers or project leaders to focus on delivering the tasks within the time allowed and the budget given. So you'll have a resource. We creating also in addition to what 
Kelly has, we have the master schedule. The master schedule have columns. Each column will have indication of the funding source, how much the project is cost, who's in charge of that project, and the status and percentage elapsed or completed. So all that also we've been working on and my intent also to present that during the budget hearing in March as well. Okay. Just because without that roadmap and people working in silos, we're never gonna be able to complete a project. Mm -hmm. So now you have a start, you have to have an end to it. So it's a good thing. I, this The second thing I wanna kind of share with you is we just had a marathon meeting with the Hilo consultant last week over the 100% completion. The project, the Hilo phase one, um, you know, it's it, the good news is the consultant delivering time, kudos to them, kudos to, uh, to staff. We spent three, four days full, you know, full eight hours, sometimes more people digging stuff home and reading it. It's about probably when you guys see the document, it's about probably 12 inch thick. The contract itself, the technical specification, the design plans is about probably eight inch thick. It's a huge, it's a hundred million dollar contract. We were able to finish it within less than a year. It's gonna go to construction. This when a, in about two months, in March, hopefully we'll have the bid opening, get notice to proceed probably by June. And that's gonna start June, you know, it's gonna start this year. In the meantime, we're working on phase two. To me, this is one of the greatest accomplishments within this, just within last year, to be able to put up that big of a project in less than a year, it's never heard of. So no, it, is, is, it is absolutely fantastic. And in terms of a critical priority where there is real, imminent hazard both to our, our workers and the environment of failure of that that Hilo facility. I I am absolutely amazed and thank you. It it certainly was the right thing to focus on. And uh whew. yeah phase one well, now we we work on we have we've been having a meeting uh to go through the design process for phase two so we could make decisions right then right at the spot what it helped us through the phase one is you know we have a good relationship with the consultant but also the decision making was was right on the spot so we couldn't afford to say okay we'll get back with you in, in a month we were making decision as we were as they were designing so um it really allowed us to move fast enough to get it out. Um, as far as um, Kona and South Kahala and uh, the accomplishment, you guys seen it. Uh, Kelly's taking the lead on the math, the mini master plans. Um, so that's that's also moving as per the schedule. But one more thing I want to bring to your attention. Um, we're going to ask for a CISPL conversion meeting with county council and the mayor's administration. And you guys also as, might as well be able to attend this meeting. The intent of that meeting to bring everybody on the same page to the new state law and the state report that was published just recently uh, me and Brenda uh, attended the state hearing about two weeks when they presented the cesspool conversion report that was completed by the Department of Health to the Senate. You know, Nicole Lowen done a great job in presenting the report, that report. So now my duty is to bring it down and do the same presentation to our county council, to 
to you, the EMC, to also the mayor's administration, so you all understand, you know, the process, priority areas, what the recommendation that went to the legislative bodies so they could start somehow be able to fund these type of conversions or provide an assistance. So um, we targeting, I think, sometime in February, maybe the end of the month. So uh, Beter will keep you informed. Um, but I think we need now to bring everybody up to speed on that report because it does play a major factor on how our wastewater eventually down the road will be predicted. Um, you know, if we're gonna go, I understand septic is not the solution to certain areas, priority areas, and especially if you have a wastewater municipality services, you wanna stay within that service area to provide connection. And also that could also help the planning department as they move into the general plan, the 2040 general plan. Now they have a document from the state department kind of tell them, you know, these are the rules and laws pertaining to cesspool conversions. And maybe that will get us out of this mess that we've been in. You know, probably would have with our code changes as well. Um, and my recommendation to you guys as an advisory committee, just it's been in my mind for a long time. And I feel like we also need to have you research it as well. I think I brought it before is service area within certain private entities. If they annex a service area, they should be able to provide sewer service to the people within that annex service area. It's done all over the country. I don't understand why we cannot do it here. You know, because you have American, Hawaii American water, you have Hawaii water, you have county, you have other private wastewater owners. They run under the uh, PUC, right? So, um, so the idea is, they could expand maybe somewhere in the county laws, or we could allow these private districts to expand and annex a service area. Once they do annex a service area, that's incentive to them to put the capital cost to expand the sewer collection system with the idea they have, they're gonna have return on, on their investment from a sewer collection. So to me, this, this we, we need to, the only way I foresee us because we are so decentralized, but yeah, we have multiple private wastewater, big companies, you know, we call them utility district or you could call them wastewater um, districts, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know what would it take to have in these people annex a service area. Once they annex it, they could provide the service to the people within that annexation. Um, if you guys are interested, I could connect you guys to people that I dealt with over the, my last 30 to 40 years in dealing with these type of things. It's doable. I, so, I think that's a, a good topic. I don't know if we're going to be able to add it to February, but the the idea in fact i listened into the um presentation oh by the way peter when you're keeping track of this we have now jumped to items roman numeral 7 4 2 the cesspool conversion project um that uh there one of the options allowed for the cesspool conversion is set up your own little package system that can handle uh, sewers instead of going into a gang cesspool, you'll go into one of these um, wastewater treatment plant in a, in a con, 
uh, in a box kind of system uh, that would be set around. And it's one of the solutions being offered at um, Pahala and Nalejo, I think, um, that uh, Nicole Lawson asked about, well, these smaller places that are going to choose to convert to a package treatment plant, if you will, um, they'll own it, they'll start it, they'll pay for it initially, but then the county should take it over because you can't count on residents continuing to do the kind of maintenance necessary. And Ramsey uh, did a really good job, I think, of responding to that, that there's no way he can take over management of hundreds of scattered package systems all around the island. Um, so I think what we're bottom line need to talk about, and I think maybe the state is looking at it as making private public partnerships, uh, encouraging private outfits like Lam Ramsey is saying to uh, do more for us uh, and not always expecting the county to do it for pennies because the county cannot. Um, so yeah, let's think about how how we can put that maybe as a as a future uh, issue. It, it's one we've recommended before, and I think we need to continue on it. Um, um, how how do we leverage somebody else managing it? It's it's become a relatively standardized business, and we ought to uh, again. It's kind of reduce the barriers that exist for um, companies coming in and uh, doing the jobs for us. Um, anything else you wanted to add before you have to run away on um, wastewater? No, I just wanna thank you and happy new year. And um, as always, I look forward to continue working with all of you. Okay, um, again, I, I'm assuming that if there are any questions on the um, planning documents that uh, Kelly uh, provided in the report that you can go back to um, Ramsey or Dora or Kelly uh, and ask them specific um, information about it. Um, the rest of the topics are, are um, I guess, uh, I don't think there was anything specific on the legislative update that we need to do other than I was very pleased that the council is not going to loosen up the requirements for a DEM director in any time soon. It's basically been put on the back burner in the closet and we'll probably never revive again. That's okay by me. Um, I don't know if there's any other imminent legislative issues you were concerned about, Ramsey. Um, I think just we need to start thinking about introducing any, you know, work with House representatives, state senators. It's This is the time now to start working on introducing the new bills. Um, I kind of wrote a handful of stuff, so I'll be sitting down with um, Nicole, maybe, and um, other state senates uh, to figure out, and our county council as well, Heather Kimball, to be able to um, maybe introduce some of these to ease our our jobs as we move forward, uh, if it's pertaining to funding or the new ideas um, that could uh, generate revenues and cover the actual cost of service as we move forward, I think that's our challenge. Um, so definitely um, you all could think about anything that you guys could legislatively want to introduce um let's talk about it so we can create the forces i've been talking to steve uh 
uh, Bader in our, uh, the mayor's administration office, he's in charge over all these legislative matters and any potential bills that may come through. So um, definitely there's certain things that we need to look into and, and start working on. Well, I, I think and, and would raise my hand if there's an opportunity to um, see what you're working on or participate in any of the meetings and uh, just be prepared for EMC to chime in on uh, support for making some of those changes. Um, give us the time to be able to do that. Definitely, you guys part of it. Um, and just keep in mind, uh, landfill operational challenges um, continues 20 years, could go so fast, it takes 15 years to side a landfill. Mm -hmm. So we need to be working on that yesterday. Yeah. You know, I keep putting the pressure on my solid waste division because I cannot afford any mishaps. We're not going to fall into the same predicament as we did when Hilo reached capacity. Yep. Um, in addition, <laughs> the latest eruption that um, took place when we sat down with the administration and trying to figure out options. How are we going to transport, continue transporting waste from east to west if, um, if that DKI highway closes, saddle road shuts down? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a challenge. It was a challenge because we collect from all over the island. And half of our tonnage comes from the east side of the county. So definitely, is that sustainable? I could tell you it's not. We know that it's not sustainable. And it wasn't sustainable when they proposed it and went ahead and did it anyway. Because they had no options. <laughs> they couldn't <had laughs> they could decide probably, John. But yeah, you're right. I agree with you. I it's mean, just... you know, we opposed it then. Yeah. You know, this is, this is not news. Yeah. So my goal is, as the director, um, I'm always forth plan forth forward um, um, with things and managing. You guys seen what we created with Kelly and what have you. So my vision is tackle it now before it become a problem. Um, so we need to start thinking, you know, even, even with another landfill be an option on the east side, it could be an option. I know you guys heard me about maybe transporting waste to Oahu as a stock feedstock for their edge power, that also could be considered as an option. So we got we got all these, we need to bring them to together. Um, and I believe me, my your my division chief could tell you I'm putting so much pressure on that division. We need to start. Fiscal year is almost going to be done in six months. So, but we set aside money so we could start exploring these options um, because we don't want to. We don't want to wait till the eleven thirty and try to ban it. I uh, definitely um, and and the rest of the agenda de will deal with uh, solid waste challenges and questions. Um, and, and so I think I'll sneak back into it. Um, so for item seven, Roman numeral seven, two uh, solid waste uh, updates and projects. Um, if you've got a question, Lee, about why Onihu, um, follow up individually, uh, if you can. I understand the LCA report is still languishing and will be anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, the recycling and landfill uh, diversion updates. Um, I, I've got a little bit more in um, item four. Uh, and I'd ask specifically about the, the landfill capacity question. Um, was there anything uh, that you wanted to bring up highlight in general, uh, either Ramsey or Mike? Yeah, let me, I'll, I'll hide 
highlight two things and then because it's five minutes, I gotta hit up, but Mike could carry on the updates. Um, definitely there's two things I did not see on the agenda. So um, number one is that we're doing the trailer study. If you guys remember, we, we banned trailers and I think early last year, we went before county council Council member Corkwich want us to look at the possibility of allowing trailers to certain sites. So we 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 change our admin rule. We committed to do some some you know study for by a third party to look at the maneuvering of these uh, trailers. So the consultant is being what we refer to use auto turn. They have these softwares that they could drop each site and bring a trailer, a model trailer and a, and a truck and actually go through the animation and the maneuvering of the actual vehicle. So we've done that for every facility. Uh, bless you, John. Uh, Someone sneezes in <laughs> so, um, so the idea is uh, we're gonna come back with a report if recommendation of the potential and which site is going to require site improvement to even make it doable or some of the site we as we know it may not even entertain it at all so that kind of will confirm our initial uh initial concerns about the safeties and what have you but the other sites we probably may need to do site modification to uh, to continue uh, to bring it back in, to bring the trailers back in. But the challenge, and we're gonna be working with you, EMC, about um, as as an advisory committee to tell us, should we, should we go in with allowing trailer to these certain sites that may potentially need site improvement? And should we do it one day a week or should we do it, you know, um, co-mangle with the existing services, but it may create delays. So that would be coming to you. I anticipate Mike will bring that a presentation to you guys um, uh, as we should. Uh, this is a report that we should share with you. And so we get your input and ideas before we take it to county council. Um, and I, I think Mike should be within the next meeting um, uh, because I think they already completed the report. So Peter will put it on the agenda for the next EMC meeting to present it to you. Um, one other thing is um, we also um, completed, we get in close to a complete, we, we heard you loud and clear when it came to two contracts we have which is H-E-R and the Waste Management of Hawaii. We've been hearing you from the day I started. Um, we heard a lot of concern from other people, the cost of government. So we'll, we're gonna address these two contracts very, very soon. So um, just to keep you guys in the you know phrase, we have not ignored it, but certain, Restriction may allow us um, um, to do the route we've taken, but um, just I want to let you know we have not ignored any of what we heard. So I think that's what I got. Mike could give the additional update. Lee Waihino should, I told my staff I want it completely done no later than the end of this month because they're supposed to complete December 31st. First, but because we added the asphalt, so we extended the time. Unfortunately, that project was done without even putting an asphalt for traffic to come in and go out, <laughs> which was insane to me. So I have to do a change order to allow the area to be asphalted. So it's a matter of just getting the material, securing it, but you know, we're going to get there, Lee. Um, all right, thanks. <laughs> well, you know that the pulley, the the trailer pull through is what they're doing on Oahu. Well, it's 
a while ago, you can both tra tra trailer in, but the question is our size is limited to the maneuver. Oahu is different layout. Yeah, I know, yeah. but they plan for it. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> you can <know. laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know. Okay, okay. Um, he's looking at it. We'll hear about the, the study findings. Yeah. We were taken on a tour of what all the other counties were doing. And uh, Maui and Oahu were doing the trailer pull through 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I did it and 20 years, years ago, but yeah. you're right. You know, uh, and, and Waihina, just to let you know, John, Waihina, we have the consultant do the turn out of turn as they were when we first started. They did not do it when they signed the contract 2017, but it was a requirement when. The new administration started. I had them go back and use the auto turn to do the to make sure that what they designed could accommodate the trailers. And we have a report from them says it does. So why he know at least based on the designer that designed the site and us asking him to go back and do the auto turn to see if it works. My understanding it does, but unfortunately we inherited sites that was not considered unfortunate but we you know it's unfortunate but as we move forward hopefully we don't need to design any more transfer stations oh, yeah. we got 21 of them no 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 but, Man, you got you got a lot of redesign to do redesign or maybe eliminate because if we're gonna go with another landfill and helo you don't need that money if we're gonna go yeah. to collection curbside collection you don't need that many transfer station we have a lot of work ahead of us um, you know, from curbside collection to control at the source to pr promote recycling to promote diversions. I mean, that it never stops, right? But but uh, keep building these transfer stations is not sustainable either. No. So, with that, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ramsey. The, the folder. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna put Mike Rivera. So the way it's cheap and not seed. Um, you provide, well, anyway, so I'm going to move now to um, seven four uh, one. All my questions, one of the, the joys of being able to write the agenda. Um, we've already touched a little bit on it. Uh, the first one, uh, the issue of the capacity of the West Hawaii landfill. Um, according to the latest figures, if we keep at the rate that we've got going, we're only going to have 23, give or take, years left in that landfill. Correct, Mike? That That is correct. So the only way we're going to get out of it is by keeping the waste out and diverting it, reducing its creation, or finding another landfill, which, as has been stated, is a 15-year effort in itself. Oahu cannot find any place on the whole island. They can put a new one for them. So I don't know why we particularly would be better off. Um, but uh, the <clears throat> the issue is what what can we do instead? And in your report, you uh, said you were looking at we could divert a lot if we had recycling reuse capabilities. And I guess the the question is. Which ones do we focus on? How can we do it? Um, and and you know what what your plan is? I had I had offered the the idea of a, a construction demolition landfill in in uh, coordination with increasing the amount of reuse of construction materials as much as we could. As I understand, we have we have one outfit down in Kona that um, deconstructs, helps, and, and takes uh, demolition and construction waste, but that's one outfit. Um, I believe they focus primarily on commercial 
demolition construction issues. Um, construction demo, it represents a fair amount, 65 tons a day said, um, how much of it can we reasonably keep out of the landfill? Okay, Georgie. Well, let me back up on Wahino uh, a little bit. I was out there last Friday and there just to give an update on what Ramsey was stating. Uh, they were laying base rock down. It looks like about 60 to 70% complete at this time. The plan is to lay the asphalt. First, we got to move the recycling bins and, and H5 near the entrances there on the right side down to the new location so they can uh, begin that pavement project towards the end of this week, beginning part of next week. So once that paving is done, uh, the, the railings for the facility would be put in. And essentially that's most of the completion. The, the hang up with Waiheno is the delivery of the metal chute there and also the delivery of the new uh, trailer that goes with it because it's a different, it's a walking floor trailer versus the compacting trailers that we normally use. So most of the project by the end of this January will be probably 85 to 90% complete. But the end of it is you're still waiting for the chute delivery, which is coming from Seattle, as well as the last concrete pour, because we didn't want to pour the, the concrete while they're installing the chute there. So once those two things are, there's still fencing, security fencing to do, and the electrical tie into the trailer. And then that essentially will complete why you know sometime during the um before March of that in terms of 100 percent most of it though will be ready for use and they can do the recycling probably towards the end of this month if we can get the signages up at least for the recycling portion and yes we can get a trailer through there yeah. uh, and, and pull through and yeah. do all those options yeah. so that is one facility that that actually is designed pretty good so um landfill capacity so I did just to go back and, and give some uh, history there for those, uh, I, we're in cell 13 right now. Uh, it's going to be full sometime in the first quarter, going into the second quarter of this year, where we'll now be going into cell 14. So that leaves 10 cells remaining uh, for the West uh, Hawaii Sanitary Landfill. At, at that point, and that's if we do nothing else, no changing in how we operate, no diversion, no, no, no mandates with that. So that, that with the quick calculation, we fill a cell in about 2.3 years, which we have about 23 years left. Uh, of all the tonnage that goes into the West Hawaii Sanitary Landfill, 40% of those materials can be diverted out. So we can do a better job with as a commission and as an island maybe creating diversions for commercial recycling and maybe C and D diversion and those types of things to try to uh, divert more materials from the landfill and keep it at that material 60% trash. Now the 60% of trash materials going into our landfill, there, there's another component there. There's a lot of contamination. So working with Craig and the recycling group and, and, and doing more focus on community outreach and as recycling, dating our transfer stations become more, uh, not necessarily a resource park, but the capability to handle single source recycling, more, more materials, C and D, blah, 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 a, uh, HHW, e-waste, oil, make the uh, facilities without being a resource park where you need three to four acres, but you can convert and redesign some of the larger transfer stations to be able to become a, more of a resource to our community and you're creating more diversion for that but also on the other end for the 40 percent creating some mandates i don't know if that's possible i haven't been here long enough but legislation uh or ordinances and and regulations to create commercial recycling uh make us recycle as well there's no mandates i believe for the resident to recycle and force recycling recycling on uh, multi-family dwellings and then that that would help uh tremendously increasing all of that diversion from our landfill. And if we do all those things, 100%, you can add another probably 10 years of life onto the 23. And then additionally, operational efficiencies, our equipment's aged over there in terms of compassion and bulldozers, replacing that equipment. I know we're gonna get ready to try to do that for the compactor this year coming up. 
making some, making some um, outreach with Craig, get in front of the schools and doing some of those things with our residents at, at, at certain community events. Maybe we can add a few more years on, onto the life of that landfill while we're citing another landfill, either on the east side or another one on the west side. I agree with Ramsey, and I, I stated it before, going from east to west is, is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, no, it's it, suicide. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it needs to be changed. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So I've never seen it that way. In terms of mileage, the amount of miles we drive in a day, in terms of going east to west, is about what a normal solid waste division would do in a week. So it, it's just well, it's a four thousand foot elevation change yeah, for the truck. Yes, plus that, oh, they love that. They love that. Know, but, yeah. yeah, but uh, in terms of establishing a C and D landfill, the last thing I talked about before I hand it over to Craig, is I don't believe we have enough C and D from that. So at the sixty five tons that we generate a day, uh, it, there are some opportunities there to have that diversion. And, uh, in terms of how we recycle that, and I think that's the sticking point for our island. What do we do with that material? And how do we how do we manage it from there? But uh, there's some definite opportunities there for us to to improve on that versus a C and D landfill or a monofill. Okay, one uh, lots lots of information there. Um, one of the top recommendations from the um, integrated solid waste management plan was to allow small businesses to use the transfer stations. And you're talking about 40% um, is, or I forget flipping it, whether it's 40, 50, 60% is recyclable that is now going into uh, landfill. If we allowed more people encouraged um, recycling by um, everybody that we could think of and allow small businesses to use a recycling opportunity in their local transfer stations, can we staff it? We need more trucks, we need more drivers, we need more pickups. Um, the bins are overflowing as it is uh, with the, the people who do recycle and the issue of contamination. I'm glad to hear your, your thinking outreach, but we need higher capacity to take this stuff. It's like closing the Kona landfill. If you wanted to clean it out, it's got to go someplace. Well, if you want to recycle, it, it's got to go someplace. Can you reasonably absorb that much more recycling material at the transfer stations and what would it take to be able to do that? Uh, to, to highlight with what Ramsey was saying, if, if you go the route of uh, collection, collection, you, you can reduce the amount, or you have to reduce the amount of transfer stations around the island. And then you'll condense those 21 down to five or six to make sure you're supporting those islands, the, the residents on those islands. And I'm not sure with curbside, just in my own observations of curbside recycling, if we can get to all the rural areas, I, I still think you'll need some of those transfer stations in the rural areas. But with that, then you can, and, and with Ramsey talking about uh, the fee structure and, and trying to modify that, I think there are opportunities in what John was saying earlier with, with pay to, there are some opportunities for businesses to utilize the transfer stations especially the smaller ones. It, it's how we design it and how we plan it for the future that would uh, determine if that, that success rate. And I think it's doable. It's just, how do we get there? It, and Georgine, just to interject, unfortunately, we, were, we are um, at the mercy of third-party um, con contractors to handle our recycling. And for instance, like Volcano, um, we didn't have any successful bidders. We had nobody that wanted to um, recycle at that site. One, because of, for odd, odd reasons, theft. People will actually break into the facility to steal the glass bottles. It's mm -hmm. just incredible. Um, but anyway, uh, we're, we're, we're relying on those third-party vendors to, um, to answer our bids and to come on, you know, and, and to take those recyclables. Recycling is not a lot of money because we're on the island. We have to ship everything off island. 
so I think it's another aspect that how do we make it attractive for the third party vendors to gain interest again, especially our off site, our country sites, like the ones that are remote, it takes a lot of staffing to reach that destination. And for, for instance, Atlas, um, you know, they're short of staffing, they're having a hard time as well. So they're dropping places that they can't get, can't get to, to pick up recycling. So it's a, it's another um, entity to that problem that is, that is out of our control, but we need to address it and try to figure out how we can make it attractive for those vendors to come back on board. I mean, one option, again, it's more in cities uh, on the mainland of automated, especially for something like High Five, you stick it in the box and ching, 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 and it hands you your, your money for uh, the, the bottles and cans. Um, yeah. Is that worth investigating? Automate it. I mean, if you can't get staff, you try to look at how can you automate the crusher, we're looking at getting that glass crusher so it's not so attractive for people to steal. You know, you put the bottle into the container and then it crashes it on site and keeps it in a container. I think mm -hmm. the only part with this, we kind of we're, we're on the same page as you. How can we make it easier? How can we make it more affordable? And I think the contamination part of it is always going to be a problem because even before I started working for DEM, I never really rinsed out my bottles or my cans for recycling. I just threw them in a, you know, the dumpster and then took them down to Atlas until I figured out that that's you need to have a clean, semi-clean product when you bring them into recycling. So it's an education to the to the public. And it, it, does any is if anybody contaminates that that somebody doesn't want to do the right thing and contaminates that source, is it again contaminating the full source? So I'm not sure how that's addressed, but we're definitely looking. And I think it's maybe that's a subcommittee we should meet with, specifically talking about these challenges and how we can go outside the box to figure them out. Well, I mean, I'd take it back one more step, and that is we got to start at the front end. Yeah. And that's getting the getting the funding to do it. And the only way we're going to do that is to get uh, get the cost of disposal at the point of purchase. Would you rather give them a nickel or a dollar? And that's basically what the nickel is easy. They give it to you. The dollar, not so much. And it, it's worked with bottles. It's worked with cans. And there's absolutely no reason it won't, it won't work uh, across the board. Mm -hmm. Everything that we are disposing of came in in a box. I guarantee it will be on next month's um, agenda. So we'll look at, at, at expanding and, and what our abilities well, are for an advanced disposal fee. But that's the money. And even if we had the money, Nobody wants to do the job. Um, they can't. They can't get the staff to want to show up. Uh, Dell. Oh, thank you. You know, I was wondering because um, the parks and recreation. You know, they pick up the trash at the different parks. Mm -hmm. I've only seen trash bins, not recyclable bins. Um, so I'm wondering. That's one part of it that you know the county can help us when they pick up the trash to make sure they have designated receptacles for recyclables. And I was at Wong Stadium too, and maybe a lot of the baseball fields, that they don't have recyclable bins, only trash bins. So I'm thinking we can start there because I was looking for one to throw my bottle and there was only trash. Hi Dell, if, if you watch the county council meetings, DP, um, the Parks and Recreation did declare in front of the county council several months ago that they are going to have recycling bins at um, all of the parks where there is rubbish. So that's on the way. Oh, good, good, thank you. And yeah. all the baseball fields, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Ball. John, did you say something? Yeah, I just said we, we've got the park and parks in Pahoa, we've got recycling bins out there already. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, which isn't to say that the bins don't disappear sometimes, but, you know. Yeah, we're hoping that they'll, if anybody wants to take what's inside the bins, like the recyclables, you know, take them if it helps a person that's recycling. The end game is it gets to the end point of recycling. Hopefully yeah. they just don't take the bins, right? They just grab what's inside of them or, you know, empty it out or whatever. But unfortunately, some people, even our thieves are... Um, a little bit lazy and they'll probably end up taking the whole bins right and taking the recyclables with them so that's unfortunate 
<laughs> Chain it up. <laughs> one one of the things um, I had uh, asked for. 4.1.3 in section seven, um, you'd listed out all the current contracts um, that you've got for uh, taking recyclables. Um, I, one, can they expand their capability if we were to divert so much more? Yeah, it, it, it's possible to um, expand what's being taken in, but I think it goes back to the um, outreach and education, so it doesn't come in as um, contaminated and mixed. Okay, um, the other question I had in that listing, um, you had several places where uh, the idea of being able to expand or maybe it was in the next section. Oh, I can't remember where. Um, that you had contract. Oh, it was about talking about the resource recovery park concept, um, where there would be contractual issues of collecting and letting other parties manage those recyclables. Are there? Are there? What? What is the nature of the the contract issues? I think we oh, oh, I, we need to check with um, Corp Council also, but currently we're collecting green waste. Uh, we have a contract for green waste, uh, non high five glass, um, plastics, and they're also looking at cardboard, and those are currently being um, contracted out. So I'm not sure if we put out another um, contract for another group to collect at the stations. That would be a um, like a conflict of interest or or yeah I'm not sure the legal part of it so you're you're thinking that if we had to bring in another party or allowed another party to take the recyclables um that would be a separate contract that would need to be written up and you'd need to negotiate somehow with the current contractor? I think yeah. one of the getting things, as much necessarily. I think, I think one of the things, Georgina, is our procurement um, code. If we were to say we had a, a, a nonprofit that was interested in helping with recycling or taking some recycling, we'd have to let that go out to all nonprofits so they have the same fair and um, chance and, and putting in an offer or a bid for that service. And I think with our recyclings, it the less recyclable goods they can collect, the less it's profitable for them to do it. And they may go away if there's another competing person coming in to, to grab some of those recyclables. Um, so I think those are two things we have to consider. Okay. One, one of the options um, that I've, I've mentioned before is to prevent material going to our landfills that we do have recycle capability for would be, for example, to ban landfilling green waste. It has to be recycled, either a transfer station or take it to um, West Hawaii. Is that something we should recommend? Or what problems would be involved in that? I think that's in a discussion, and that's what um, Mike spoke about earlier, about mandates for commercial and possibly um, residential. Yeah, that's part of the 40%, Georgine, of, of of materials going into the landfill, I think it's around 10 or 15% of the material of that 40% is green waste going into mm -hmm. into, into the landfill. So mm -hmm. it's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. It's just looking at making sure it's the right material that can be uh, that can be used for the composting or mulching process for uh, out there in east or east or west Hawaii. And um, 
having a some sort of mandate, I would agree with that, and it would help help that process along. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a source separation issue. Source separation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and because I mean, you could get people to do it if you could set the bins up side by side, but then there's a cross contamination, right. which is is the price you pay for that. Yeah, yeah. So, on, on or whatever. I mean, if you could get them everybody to get on board with doing the source separation, which they actually most of them will do. Yeah, but it just takes a little bit to screw it all up. It doesn't take much. No. <laughs> make that whole thing go bad. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Craig was talking about with outreach and education. And, and it's just part of that changing the culture of, of how we handle and manage waste on the island. Yeah. Are there other <laughs> questions, comments, <laughs> suggestions, <laughs> items to bring up next time related to how do we save our landfill well i mean we just yeah I, I i wanted to make a comment just from um, a recent experience um i brought in a 15 cubic yard bin to do some major landscape uh, renovation and i was advised by the trucker um the bin delivery company that once they got to the west Hawaii landfill with this 15 cubic yards of green waste, 2.5 tons actually is what it came out to, um, that it would be very carefully inspected by the, um, the management company at the landfill. And if it didn't pass their initial inspection, that it would go into the landfill as opposed to into the green waste section. Mm -hmm. Um, we were very careful and, and I passed uh, muster, but I wonder how many kind of random decisions are made by an employee of the contractor that may or may not be legitimate um, and, and is literally forcing large amounts of green waste to go into the landfill instead of um, to go through the recycling process. And I understand they, they don't want big rocks because they're, they're trying to mulch this product down um but uh that that was a surprise to me so um again just from personal experience i i can see where i think some of the that 40 percent is coming from it's just coming from um potentially arbitrary decisions that's really what my trucker was getting across to me is that it just seemed like on any given day you met the wrong guy and you had to go around to the other side and and get this, the, the contractor at the landfill then gets an additional $164 uh, for the cost of, of delivering that bin into the landfill versus the composting side. So there's actually a financial incentive for them to divert from the greenway side into the landfill. I, I, can, um, I can appreciate that comment, Rick. Um, because we, we pay the, that management company as well. When we bring our waste there, we do get a charge for that. So it's not free to us. Um, and I think they're not looking for those big roster, but they're looking for contamination. But what level of inspection? Because it's, an, it's, a, it's a headache for the contractor to go through that inspection, then get, then get turned over to the other side. And do they just avoid that whole process and just go to the other side to begin with? So we should be making it more easier and a more consistent manner of inspection and we'll look into that i'm sure that um mike revere is taking notes on that we will we'll definitely look into that i think that's also another point of upfront education to know, you know a label sitting on your bin what can go in there so that you can do proper source separation other thoughts comments I mean, this isn't going away, guys. So we need to figure out, and and I frankly am really kind of disappointed at uh, minimal uh, volume that's going to be tackled with the infrastructure uh, grant process. Um, one response I had was, you know, is an issue of scoping, trying to do too much, too big, too fast, 
uh, project and it's it's going to be a killer. Do you really need a three, four acre site if you want to start small and incrementally increase the number of materials that you can accept? I don't know. Um, and that's that's again part of the the challenge of taking the time to work through a really complex set of issues. Um, anything else you would like to highlight, Mike, for solid waste, what you need from us? Not not at this time, Georgina. I think there, I, I, I've got plenty of notes here. <laughs> <laughs> more money, yeah. More yeah, money. more money, more money. Got that, got that. We'll, we'll have the collection uh, pot for you at each transfer station. <laughs> Donate your funds here. <laughs> you got to get it at the point of purchase. <laughs> yes, John. Next time, next time. Speaking of next time, okay, I'm going to close out um, reports and correspondence unless anybody else has something to bring up. Um, so future agenda items, items eight, um, lots of follow-up issues I have written down and I got to go back to my notes, um, talking about budget, talking about um, the zoning and the need for more space, more land. Uh, I'll figure out how to, how to roll those topics um, together. I think um, legislative initiatives. Uh, hopefully we'll see what DEM's wish list is. We should get a better feel for what's popping up on its own at um, the state legislature um, and also council. Uh, I know there's still efforts looking at um, what didn't pass last time, including the extended producer responsibility um, so there may be uh, opportunity to, to tackle that and have you start thinking about it. Um, other items that you want us to address, let me know. We already have some items we postponed from last meeting that they couldn't make it this meeting, uh, including Ashley Kirkowitz talking about um, this uh, grant she got for making plastic art, um, so she can explain that to us. Uh, we think we've got maybe even Zendo lined up for next week's, uh, our next month's meeting on uh, zoning. I'm gonna try to make the uh, public meeting they're having at Waimea tonight, um, and they're having another one at the West Hawaii Center, uh, Civic Center, tomorrow, five to seven, if anybody can make that. There's some on the Hilo side and I didn't pay attention to those because I don't live on that side. Um, but the the whole issue of zoning um, and how, and particularly in Puna, uh, that that we can see if there's a way to make sure they're, they're taking into account um, sewering and recycle and uh, reuse opportunities within the zoning uh, planning that they're doing. Um, and then we will also hear hopefully from corporate counsel on um, the, the idea of advanced disposal fee that John keeps bringing up. So we'll, we'll get a legal opinion and we can talk some more about that. So if there, again, if there are any other items, um, let me know uh, and do some homework on it. Um, our next meeting is uh, February 28th, which I think is a Tuesday again. Um, so John, you should be able to make it, right? Hope is good. <laughs> John Bird, as well as John Olson. Um, we're, we're trying to play with the scheduling so that we can get as many commissioners available as possible um, and, and need to decide how we want to do it. We scooted this meeting around because there was a lot going on um, elsewhere. Uh, and uh, I apologize for uh, 
you having to scramble your schedules. Um, that meeting will be in Hilo. Uh, you're welcome to attend. We'll also keep Zooming. Um, any other announcements from anybody? I apologize for not having a bathroom break. <laughs> I, 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 we have so many things to discuss. I just keep going. Um, maybe that'll be John. John usually needs to take a break to go feed the meter, but he didn't have to pay for parking today. I, no, I was, parking was free. <laughs> <laughs> But there, there are, and feel free if if you have the need. Um, the only problem we would have if we fall under quorum, if too many people disappear, uh, I need to be reminded. So remind me, John, to always get that in the schedule. Who are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything else? I would encourage you if you didn't read all the materials that were included in the package today, please do so. There's a lot of good stuff in there, even, even not counting my stuff. Um, a lot of good stuff came from DEM this time and uh, very much appreciate it. And then you're gonna send me that. Um, and I'm gonna send you that. Okay. And I'll see if you wanna become a pig with me. Um, so yes, we I may have another announcement or or need a motion to add somebody else to the issue uh to the group um again if you know anybody from our imminent uh vacancies that are going to occur and are existing we've got district two seven and eight um thank you very much rick for being willing to to come to our meeting still um, and hopefully Dee will come to our next meeting. Um, but we we need people who are interested and want to participate and think and and read all the stuff that we we pull together. Um, but I am willing to uh hear for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's one of the reasons why I almost didn't want to be chair so I could make more motions. It's a <laughs> silly process to go through for me to motion. Um, so you may, and I also don't have a, a real uh, strong desire to do motions. I more want to talk to people and get them on board and think of ideas and keep brainstorming about things without making formal motions, but we have two, a motion proposed and seconded on adjournment. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. And I'll see yeah. you next month. Thank you. Ahoy. Thank you. Bye.